And good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday from the McDonald's across to the high school here on the Hilltop. We're going to talk basketball this morning. Madison Boys basketball coach Sharon Wilkerson in with us. A little pleasant Saturday, a little more pleasant coach. Just kind of talk about a win last night, which is good. But good morning to you. Thanks for being on the show. Good morning, Mr. Torrance. Greatly appreciate you, uh, you having me as your guest today. It's uh, – it's – it's a good basketball season when you can talk about a lot of wins, but it's good It's good when you can just talk a little bit of basketball. It's always good to talk basketball in the state of Indiana, my <laughs> friend. So uh, yeah, yeah. We are, uh, we're truly blessed. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to maximize the time that we have mm-hmm. and, and uh, see if we can't get these guys to reach their maximum potential. And that's always, always for any coach in any sport is trying to get the kids – to find what their potential is. That's right. It's, and it's a uh, challenge. It is. It, it, that's, the, uh, that's the reason that you coach. Yeah. You know, it is, uh, you know, the camaraderie, uh, you know, the failures, the mm-hmm. successes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, man, it's, uh, it's a great tool uh, to use for the rest of your life. And when you, when you, when you have kids that, and, and every kid has potential. I mean, they, they, they do. They just have to find it. It's easy enough to say, hey, you have potential. This is what you need to do. Boy, it's hard to, uh, to implement that in a kid's mind. That's exactly right. You know, we, uh, we often tell our kids you can't teach something that you don't know. Right. Uh, so, you know, for us, uh, you know, we're trying to uh, accomplish things that hadn't been accomplished here in Madison for a long time. Mm-hmm. And uh, a big piece of that is, is the mental toughness. Right. Uh, you know, we tell our kids all the time, if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and there's been several times that they've been ultra uncomfortable. Right. And, you know, for me as a coach, uh, you know, I, I, I get uh, I get excited about it because mm-hmm. I understand that right. that's part of the process. Mm-hmm. You And you, you, you look at, at <laughs> you, every team wants to win a sectional, you want to win your conference, you want to advance in the tournament, so on and so forth. But from the start of the season to the end of the season, wherever that may be, always when you get to the end, if you can reflect on your growth as a team, you've got to make a program and a coaching staff feel pretty good. It, it definitely does. It's very rewarding, mm-hmm. uh, you know, especially being a, a new staff mm-hmm. uh, coming in and, and changing the culture and changing philosophies mm-hmm. and approach. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot when you talk about building a program uh, from top to bottom. Uh, so, you know, we've, we've tried to get our guys not to focus so much on the results mm-hmm. as much as the process right uh, so because we kind of figure that if we can get ourselves ready for where we going we cover where we are right let's talk about you a little bit uh, graduate of Jeffersonville High School back in 90 93 I'm old Mr. Torrance I'm uh, old <laughs> I, I'm right there with you buddy I'm right there with you you're you're a whole lot younger than I am 93 graduate of, of Jeffersonville High School talk about your experience as a high school basketball player uh, back in the back in the nineties, how was how how was it for you as a player? You know, Mr. Torrance, I was blessed, my friend. Um, you know, I, I had a high school coach, uh, Michael Broughton, that that really cared about us as people first. Um, you know, he often said that uh, in order to be a good basketball player, you got to first be a good person and a good student. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that's I, I've carried that with me. Mm-hmm. You know, unfortunate for me, uh, my college coach kind of had the same philosophy. Right. Uh, so you know, I had a really good foundation, mm-hmm. uh, and. That now, you know, I'm in the position that I'm in. I try to, to share and lean on those experiences uh, that I had as a player uh, and, you know, and, and experiences as a coach as well. How much uh, did Coach Broughton instill in you then that you can still use today? You know, w- one of the things, that, there's two things that, that he always focused on uh, in, in, in coaching us. And one of the things was, was love. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, you got to love your brothers and you got to love what you do. You got to right. love the guys around you. Right. Uh, I mean, man, it's just something about that positive energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other thing that he always preached to us was uh, to be unselfish. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he often said that, you know, if, if this game was just about you when you left, nobody else would come to the game. Right. I mean, man, so it just so happens, and that's what we tell our guys, you know, uh, this program is it's such uh, – it, it, it has such rich tradition, if you will. And, you know, we've told these guys that it's our turn now to carry this torch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's going to be others after us. Right. Uh, right now, it's, it just so happens to be that we're in the captain seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we want to make sure that we represent accordingly. Uh, we want to try to do it with class and integrity. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to hold guys accountable to, to a high standard. 
When you left Jeffersonville, graduated from Jeffersonville, went to IU, spent some time there with Coach Bobby Knight, and I, I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> you know, Coach Knight is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of funny, Mr. Torrance, because, you know, high sights 2020. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, so my high school coach was completely – uh, different than, than Coach Knight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, playing for my high school coach in three years, I may have heard him say two cuss words. <laughs> coach Knight says two cuss words in a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was, it was, uh, it was getting tender love, right, and then it was getting tough love, right. And you know, the from a personal standpoint, the combination of the two saved my life. Sure. Sure. And, and, and you, you look at that situation and, you know, everybody wants to have the perfect coach. And I don't care in what sport and what year and how old you are. You want to have the coach that you really connect with. And sometimes easier said than done. It, it's tough being a coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, uh, you know, as a person, you, you genuinely care about the kids that's playing for you. Uh, you, want to, you want what's best for them. You, you want to try to prepare them for the future. Sure. Uh, but then also there is the side of coach. Mm -hmm. And, you know, coach has a job to do. Right. Coach has expectations to meet. Uh, you know, and, and trying to get guys to climb that hill sometimes can be a tough challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. at the end of the day, I believe that that's the reason that you coach. You know, these young men, they have uh, they have treasures. Sure. Uh, you know, and typically uh, some of the uh, some of the most uh, stubborn kids have mm -hmm. the greatest treasures. Right. So, you know, we've we've definitely taken an approach of positivity and, and trying to get guys to, to buy into what we're doing. You, you look at your time spent as a player, now as a coach, and, and I've talked to coaches for, for years, that, you know, they, they've said that kind of everybody mirrors the same thing. It's because you're a good basketball player doesn't make, going to mean you're going to make a good coach, or, or vice versa. If you're not a very good basketball player, it doesn't mean you're going to make a terrible basketball coach. That's exactly right. It's knowledge and student and learning of the game, and, it, and learning of the game not only goes for the players, it goes for the coaches, too. Definitely. Uh, I have, you know, it's kind of funny. I've, I've been coaching since I was 23 years old, mm -hmm. and I've, I just actually told our team the other day this group of kids has made me grow more as a coach than any other group that I've ever had. Right. Uh, and, and that is the ultimate compliment. Uh, you know, they've actually uh, made me look at some things differently mm -hmm. in, in the way that we approach things. Right. Uh, so, and, you know, I, th I think that, uh, you know, everything is constantly evolving. Right. Uh, you know, the way that you communicate uh, to kids and student athletes mm -hmm. is constantly evolving. Right. Uh, you know, the, the student athletes are, uh, they're highly intelligent. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Man, they got a lot of information. Right. Uh, I mean, man, they're they're really smart and astute, and uh, you know they want to know why. Right. I mean, so if if you ask the kid to do something, and uh, you know you can't justify why you're asking, mm -hmm. I mean, man, then I think that you tend to lose them. Right. Uh, so we always make sure that you know we have open dialogue with our guys, mm -hmm. and you know they understand uh, how far to go and how far not to go. Uh, <laughs> from the time you played, and now coaching. And, and I like, I've asked this to coaches, I've told you this, I've asked coaches different things and I like answers, different answers, because everybody gives me something different. Absolutely. How much has the game changed since the time you played to now you're coaching? A tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that probably, I think the thing that probably has impacted the game in this country the most is the European players. Oh, wow. You know, I think if you take a look across the board at, at any level, mm -hmm. uh, the, the European players, no matter if they're seven foot or if they're six foot, mm -hmm. they can all dribble, pass, and shoot it. You know, they, uh, you know, and I've, I've, I was very fortunate, Mr. Torrance, because I had an opportunity to spend almost 10 years playing in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same game, but it's completely different. And you know, how? And so how? So in Europe, so let's say, let's take the United States of America for an example. So if you're in high school and you're six, 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 seven, they automatically throw you under the post because right. you're big. Right. But in Europe, they play you to position according to your skill set. Mm -hmm. So I've seen six, two, six, three dominant post players right. in Europe. Right. But at the same time, you look in the NBA, we got seven footers that's stepping out and shooting threes and handling the basketball right. and making passes and, right. you know, putting it on the floor. Uh, you know, it's it's really evolved in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's evolved in in regards to the speed, right. if you will. I mean, I think if if you take a look at uh, specifically the NBA, the scoring has gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, guys have have really uh, their skill sets have have improved. Uh, 
I mean, threefold. Right. The way that it, it it's the game it, it is evolving at a rapid rate. Uh, you know, we've tried to bring a little bit of that here to, to Madison. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, thank God for us, it's been embraced. Right. Uh, you know, we, we talk about that spurtability. Uh, you know, that spurtability doesn't necessarily have to last for 32 minutes. Right. But if in a two or three minute stretch, you can hit, you know, you can hit a run, mm-hmm. uh, you put yourself in a good spot. And I think that in itself is where the game has gone to. Yeah, how much is it, or has it, how much has a three point line affected the game? Uh, I think it's affected the game. <laughs> three point the three point shot is an extremely invaluable weapon mm-hmm. in the game of basketball mm-hmm. the problem is is finding kids with that skill set right and you know here at Madison and I've tried to explain to our guys we got five guys literally on the floor at any time that can shoot the three ball mm-hmm. i mean and that's a that's a luxury that most coaches don't have right uh, so it uh, it allows for better spacing mm-hmm. uh, it, it allows for guys to to be able to create mm-hmm. if you will sure and uh, you know we've tried to take advantage of that. It's it's uh, it, I've heard it a thousand times. You can live and die by the three. It could be your best friend and be your worst enemy. <laughs> that is it, and it's a fine line. Mm-hmm. You know we like the three point shot, sure. uh, but I think last night, if I remember correctly, I think we only made three or four threes. Mm-hmm. You know, and we right. we come out with a win in right. a very tough environment yeah. against a really good team. Sure. You know, Luke Allman. Uh, I think that he's been our high point guy this year. Uh, I think he had thirty uh, at one point and. He didn't make a three. Right. I mean, uh, yeah. 90% of his shots came from within the paint. So even as much as the game has evolved, uh, I think that the fundamentals are still the same, if you will. You you, um, you spent a year at Shaw last year, coming to Madison. When you get to Madison, what's what's in your mind? What do you what do you want? To, what's your first thing you need to do? What's what do you need to get we get rolling with? Build relationships. Mm-hmm. I think that that is you know I think if you look around the game, I think that the coaches that has a personal relationship with their players are the ones that are successful. Mm-hmm. You know, every coach is teaching the same. You jump to the ball, be on the line, box out. Mm-hmm. I mean, every coach is teaching the same fundamentals right. around the country at all levels. Right. Uh, I think that the, the determining factor is is what kind of personal relationship do you have with your kids where in tough situations you can get them to respond. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that we really have focused on uh, in, in coming in and being a first-year coaching staff. You, you, well, let's, let's talk a minute about your coaching staff. You, you, got, you got some some notable people sitting on your sidelines. How'd you put that kind of coaching staff together? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm probably a little bit different. Uh, you know, being at that college level really spoiled me right <laughs> <laughs> right yeah so you got so we got uh, you know I'm, I'm a huge believer in uh two things number one getting guys that played the game mm-hmm. uh you know i have a philosophy that you can't teach what you don't know right uh and, and additionally uh i think getting guys that was part of the program that you're at mm-hmm. is ultra important right you know you can always tell by the way a program's being ran is if the former players come back or not mm-hmm. and if the former players come back then you know you yeah. got a pretty good program right uh, so um i got three former players on the staff mm-hmm. uh, from madison yeah. uh obviously uh, every coach on our staff has played at, at one level or another. Uh, so well, we're we're pretty we're pretty excited about the staff we've put together. You, and when you have a, a staff, you and it doesn't always hold true this way. But when you have a, a, a good staff like that, guys can specialize on different areas of the game. That's exactly right. You know, one of the things that I was asked, Mr. Torrance, when I first took the job, is why you have so many coaches. Yeah. And you know, if in a perfect world. I think that being able to relate is the number one key to being able to reach student athletes. Right. Now, there may be two or three kids as a head coach that I can't relate to for whatever the reason. Right. Not saying that that's the case. But, right. Uh, maybe it is. Right. So in my mind, uh, the more opportunity that we give those kids to be able to have somebody to relate to, mm-hmm. the better our chances are of reaching them. Right. Uh, you know, and that's one thing that I've explained to my coaches, and they've done a really good job. Of, you know, making sure that they uh, check 
checking on guys, making sure guys is okay, asking if they need anything. And, you know, and sometimes, Mr. Torrance, I'm not even a part of that conversation. Right. You know, but I have the trust in my staff right. uh, that they will definitely uh, pull me in at the appropriate time if needed. Uh, but if not, you know, I trust that they will uh, push our student athletes in the proper direction. You guys uh, have a pretty active summer last summer. We did. Mm -hmm. We uh, we got around to some places. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that, that I – one of my goals in, in taking the job here at Madison was to get these kids some exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are ultra talented. Right. Uh, it just so happens that um, – let me say this, Mr. Torrance. Madison is a wonderful community. Mm -hmm. uh, school board's been great. Dr. Studebaker, Mr. Gassaway, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bronkella. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the parents. Right. Uh, it's been absolutely phenomenal. Sure. Uh, that being said, uh, unfortunately, we live in a society where the only people that care about Madison is the people in Madison. Right. The right. only people that care about Southwestern is the people at Southwestern. Sure. So we figure that in order for our guys to get outside of Madison when their time is done here, we got to get them seen. Right. So that has been uh, a very high goal of ours right. is, you know, let's get these guys in front of some college coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, let's get them to some places uh, that they're not familiar with. Uh, to help them try to get to where they're trying to go. Right. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us, we had a pretty good summer. Yeah. And, and working hard in the summer uh, builds the, the winter months for basketball. That's right. And, and you get, do, you, do, do kids understand that? No. <laughs> they do not. <laughs> they do not. They do not. Yeah. You know, and, and we've, you know, we focused on that. There, there's so many intricate parts to building a program. Sure. And one of the things that we've always told our guys is ROI. That's return on investment. Right. So you're only going to get out of it what you put into mm -hmm. it. And, you know, we had a really, really good off season. Mm -hmm. uh, guys was getting up 7 in the morning, being in the weight room and running on the football field. And I mean, my coach is yelling and screaming at them. <laughs> and, you know, in fact, it's kind of funny because that will be uh, one of the topics that we discussed today, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for Charlestown. Right. You know, guys, man, I, you remember when you guys was up at seven in the morning, you was running and you was cranky and you was angry. Right. And, I mean, man, now, well, you got, you're getting your reward. Right. I mean, man, and, and what better reward to, to get than, than where we sit at currently at, at nine and two. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of motivation and inspiration, if you will. Coach, nine and two, as you mentioned, Coach, a win last night at Scott, a hard fought win at Scottsburg last night. Um, when you started the season, and we, I've kind of posed this question to you a couple times during our pregame interviews, are you are you where you want to be at at this point in the season? I mean, nine and two, you would think, wow, it's it's great. We've had a good season. You've lost to Southwestern. You lost to B and L. Are you where you want to be? From a process standpoint, we still got a few things to iron out. Mm -hmm. um, from a, a record standpoint and from a outside looking in standpoint, yeah, we're we're pretty happy. Yeah. Uh, but you know, as as we've told the guys. Um, where we're going, we got to get better. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, one of the things that we've set out to accomplish is, you know, our main goal is to win that section. Right. You know, obviously the conference is important to us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's not like at the college level, you know, your, your conference standing and your conference performance determines how you do in the tournament. Sure. Uh, you know, it's high school basketball. Yeah. So for us, we kind of figured that, uh, you know, the Hoosier Hills Conference prepares us for our sectional. Right. And if we're able to, uh, to win that conference, it's just icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. Uh, but our number one goal is to win the sectional. I, I think I heard you, you mention to Travis last night on the post game about the, this is one of the toughest sectionals in the state of Indiana. There's no doubt. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt. Uh, you know, when you got a sectional opponent uh, in your sectional and they have players that uh, Coach Kyle is coming to watch, yeah. uh, that gives you a, a pretty good indication <laughs> right. of, of how tough the sectional is. Right. Uh, and, you know, this sectional is uh, tough top to bottom. Mm -hmm. um, so so we got to put ourselves in a position where, uh, well, let me say this, obviously, uh, we're hoping for a really good draw. Sure. Um, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, the, right. that's the first hope. Right. Uh, and then the second hope is that uh, we're playing our best basketball. Yeah. And if we can, uh, you know, happen to catch a break, the right draw, and, and continue to grow and, and mature, uh, we feel like we got a good chance. 
Lost the opener in the season to Southwestern, then reeled off four in a row. Trinity Lutheran, Jennings County, Corridon, South Dearborn. Lost to a, a B&L team, and then have reeled off five straight uh, since that time. So a four-game and a five-game winning streak, and those winning streaks for every coach hopefully become contagious. <laughs> definitely. We definitely would like for it to become contagious. <laughs> uh, but, you know, Mr. Torrance, unfortunately, uh, you learn the most from a loss. Yeah, oh, sure. You know, when you uh, – even if you play poorly and you win, you mm -hmm. cover things. Things up. Right. So, and, and that's one of the things, again, uh, you know, sometimes after the Southwestern game we lost, if you'd have came in our locker room, you'd have thought that we won. Mm -hmm because we tried to make it positive. We thought that we played pretty well sure. in a tough environment. Right. Uh, so it, it, the approach was different, if mm -hmm. you will. For sure. Uh, but then there's also been times that we've had wins and you come in the locker room and you would have thought that we lost. Yeah. You know, because it, it's not about the result as right. much as it is the process. The process. The, the meat of the schedule for you guys is, is on the horizon. Yes, it is. And it, the schedule, is, is bit, it changes a little bit from year to year, but the, the process of the schedule with the Hoosier Hills Conference especially. You've got Charlestown tonight, New Albany, Floyd Central, Silver Creek, North Harrison. Uh, it doesn't get easy. That's a tough four-game stretch. <laughs> it's a little bit <laughs> that's, tough. That's tough. But, you know, Mr. Torrance, actually, it's uh, it's really a blessing in disguise mm -hmm. uh, because I think that the way our schedule has been set up this year, it's progressively gotten tougher. Sure. So it's given us a chance to kind of prepare ourselves mm -hmm. uh, to kind of grow into the team that we're trying to become. Uh, so uh, tonight will be a tough game. Sure. Uh, you know, I tell guys all the time, you can't pay attention to guys' records. I mean, man, you got to pay attention to where they are as, as far as a team and maturity standpoint. Right. And, you know, we kind of feel like uh, Charlestown has its best basketball ahead of them. Sure. Uh, so once we get uh, once we get through tonight, uh, then we'll turn our, our attention, obviously, to New Albany and Floyd Central. And, you know, for us, it's a great opportunity because we got them at home. Mm -hmm. You know, we let one slip away uh, in Bedford. Right. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, I think that that was unfortunately one of the things that we had to go through to learn mm -hmm. what it takes to compete at this level. Right. And you and you, I, you, you mentioned it at a great point. It, you got to build off a loss. You, you, nobody likes to lose. Sometimes they they help more than they hurt. That's right. Because, you, you know, it's, there, there's been a couple of games that we, in my opinion, haven't deserved to win. Sure. But sure. due to our perseverance right. and our, uh, our ability to stay together as, as a unit, mm -hmm. uh, we was able to, to pull it out. And I think that that speaks uh, volumes about a team's potential. Right. I mean, if you don't play well and you're still able to win, uh, I think that, that that puts you in a really good spot. Mm -hmm. And I, I, we've talked about this, Travis and I, uh, about when we, we've done games and it's like, well, they're, they're not playing very well, but they still got to win. And, or, or what's worse, we played well, but we couldn't close it to get the win. I, I don't know the, the, how that weighs out. So, you know, our guys is in a unique situation because, you know, they've... <sighs> They've come so far, sure. but yet still have a ways to go. Right. And, you know, when you're pushing student athletes and trying to get them to a place that they've never been, mm -hmm. you know, they kind of got this glare at you like, man, you sure we supposed to do this? <laughs> it's, you know, so it's one of those things. And, and again, it I think that it speaks two things. It speaks about their maturity. Right. And then it also speaks uh, about the instinct that they have for the game of basketball. Well, it, it, again, it's, it's a whole lot easier to lose and a whole lot harder to win based on effort. You know, we, we, one of the things, Mr. Torrance, that we've told our guys in, in athletics, because it's all about competition. Mm -hmm. In athletics, you have to hate to lose more than you love to win. Yeah. And if you can if you can get that mindset, and that's the mental toughness right. that we're talking about, right. if you can get that mindset, I believe that sky's the limit. You were down last night. Memory serves me correctly. I think the biggest Scottsburg lead at one point was at nine. Nobody panicked. There's not a nine point no, shot, so we don't yeah. no, we, we try to you know, we try to keep it together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we uh, one of our mottos is is uh, when adversity comes the number one rule is don't freak out. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. you got to stay calm. Right. I mean, man, you, now we can be uh, very stern, sure. if you will, in our mm -hmm. delivery. Uh, but at the same time, you got to remain calm so you can uh, stay focused on the task at hand. And that's, you know, that's that spurtability right. that we talked about. Uh, you know, we was um, losing momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, we made a couple of changes. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for us, the changes uh, worked out in our favor. Right. Uh, but, you know, those are times that you really find out about who your team is. And I thought that last night that they showed a lot of perseverance. You know, one of the things, Coach, you, you've kind of hit on a few, couple times is, is – you get you, you get five guys on the floor at any one time. You can th shoot a three. You've got five guys that can get you 20 on any given night. And you've had different scores for different nights, which teams do. But sometimes you rely mainly on a guy. You've got more than a guy to rely on. Caden Oliver, I'll use him as an example last night, had a pretty good overall game. You know, he is uh – he has far exceeded any expectation that I had for him as a freshman coming in. Sure. Uh, you know, the staff and I, uh, we knew that he was talented. Sure. Uh, but the, the thing that he brings to the game, he has an instinct uh, that can't be taught. Mm -hmm. I mean, man, he's, uh, he's wiry, he's long, he's athletic. Uh, he understands the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, and, and for, you know, Coach Knight used to always say every player has lapses in play. Right. And, you know, as a freshman, um, those lapses are probably a little bit more prevalent than in older guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but even those lapses, he's he's far exceeded our expectations. Uh, we fully trust him with mm -hmm. the ball in his hands. Well, and you and again, he's one example. I mean, Luke Allman's had a couple of really good games. Luke Miller's had a couple of really good games. Mason Wells had a couple. I mean, you, you just the list goes on and on. So if a team is going to contact concentrate on one guy they can't because there's there's too many to cover that's right and that you know I, I, I firmly believe in that philosophy Mr. Torrance you know my high school team uh, we had seven division one players mm -hmm. and you would think that there would be a lot of animosity right about it, but it was just the opposite mm -hmm. and that was something that uh, that I, I will carry with me for the rest of my life right you know I think you, even if you look at let's take Michael Jordan for example probably one of the greatest players that ever played a game mm -hmm. he couldn't do it by himself. Right. You know, he went through some growing pains. Right. He had to get the right personnel around him. Mm -hmm. He had to get the right supporting cast. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and even then, uh, that supporting cast carried a lot of the weight. Right. I mean, so it, it takes an entire unit to be able to reach a unit's maximum potential. One of the things we've noticed this year, and, and not only at Madison, but from a few teams that we've covered, um, how sharing the basketball is important, how, how being unselfish is important. And for the most part, this team does a pretty good job with that. Uh, you know, Mr. Torrance, I think if you just look around in athletics in general, whether it's hockey, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, typically the teams that are the closest yeah. are the most successful. Sure. I mean, so if, you know, you let's take Tom as for an example at Michigan State. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he doesn't always get the McDonald's All-Americans right. say that a Kentucky gets. Right. But for whatever the reason, uh, come March, mm -hmm. he's always in the thick of things. Right. And, you know, for me, uh, as an outsider looking in, 90% of that is because he literally has a family. Right. Uh, you know, and it's, you know, that family stays together through thick, thin, and, and good, yeah. if you will. So, right. And our guys have done a pretty good job of it. Silver or uh, Corden Central, the sectional location, Silver Creek, Madison, Scottsburg, North Harrison, Salem, Corden, and Charlestown. Silver Creek right now 11 and 1, Madison 9 and 2, Scottsburg 6 and 6, North Harrison 7 and 3, Salem above 500 at 5 and 4. Some pretty good competition. <laughs> it's some tough teams in that. It's some tough teams in that yeah. sectional. You know, and we kind of feel whoever comes out of that sectional mm -hmm. is going to have a real legit chance of getting to Indianapolis. Right. I mean, we feel that our sectional is that strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it's it's obviously every program that you named has has wonderful coaches. Yeah. Uh, they do a really good job of preparing their kids. Uh, you know, but probably right now, obviously, Silver Creek has to be the favorite. Right. Uh, rightfully so. Sure. Uh, you know, and that's kind of what everybody is gunning for it. They've right. set a high standard and I think that it's good for, you know, Southern Indiana basketball. Absolutely. Again, appreciate you being on today. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Torrance. Have a good day, my friend. All right. That's Coach Sharon Wilkerson. Coach's Corner live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. We do it every Saturday morning. Next week, we'll talk uh, with Terry King, Shaw Memorial Lady Hilltopper basketball coach. He'll be on with us uh, next Saturday. I want to thank A.J. Bramer in studio. I'm Tim Torrance, live from McDonald's here on Works 96.7. Down here, we like good coffee that's freshly brewed and breakfast that suits your fancy, like a sausage biscuit with egg or sausage gravy and biscuit, now just two bucks each. McDonald's. 
Southern inspired, Southern approved. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba.